The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. May the words that I speak and the words that you hear be in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 1 of St. Mark's Gospel begins very abruptly by telling us that this book is about the good news of Jesus Christ. The Greek word for good news is euangelion, the root of the English word we translate as evangelism or evangelist. But to those first readers of Mark's little book, what did that word euangelion mean? It is a piece of political jargon, which would have been literally understood as a bit of good news or a pleasing message. A modern equivalent might be a press release which comes from Buckingham Palace or Downing Street, announcing a piece of positive news for public interest. Maybe the announcement of a new royal baby or some achievement for the nation. Something good or exciting has happened, which we can all be glad about, and a bit more. For in some way, great or small, public life will probably be changed for the better. So this euangelion, this gospel, is a message which will change our lives for the better. Public life, its politics or possibilities, are going to be transformed very much for the good. So a small religious sect in first century Palestine adopts the language of an official proclamation about someone called Jesus, who has a royal title, the Son of God. A modern phrase we might now use is to say that this little book is announcing the news of regime change. A new reign has been inaugurated. By verse 14, where our gospel began today, the main character arrives, Jesus of Nazareth, and he announces himself as he opens his lips for the first time giving this news of regime change. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. In other words, if we strip away the familiar vocabulary of Bible translations, the readers and hearers would would hear this. Listen up, sit up. Here's a major piece of news. God is taking over. So watch out, look and listen to this good news, for the present state of affairs is going to change forever. New management is moving in. One of the most fundamental aspects of this book, St. Mark's Gospel, is that it is not some interesting chronicle about a figure from the past. Rather, As you read and hear this gospel, you are about to find out how this person's life is going to alter the shape of everything that is possible for you and me, the readers. The great German Protestant theologian Jürgen Moltmann was a prisoner of war in Scotland in 1945. As the war ended, the German powers were shown photographs of the horrors of the camps at Belsen and Buchenwald. Very suddenly, they had to deal with the nightmare realization that they had been fighting for a regime responsible for unimaginable genocide and atrocities. Moltmann had next to no Christian background nor theological understanding. The British army chaplain distributed to them copies of the Bible. 
Maltman says, I read Mark's gospel as a whole and came to the story of the passion. When I heard Jesus' death cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I felt growing within me the conviction that this is someone who understands you completely, who is with you in your cry to God, and has felt the same forsakenness you are living now. I summoned up the courage to live again. Mark's Gospel, the earliest of the four, is different from all the others. He makes his point in the first sentence. It is reinforced as Jesus is pushed onto the stage without one word of introduction. All we are told is his name. We don't know anything of his origins, nothing of his family background. There is no Christmas story. Up goes the curtain. There he is stood. No prelude, no apologies, no explanation. This is God's anointed one. And the gospel continues throughout in the same vein. We are about to be told all sorts of stories about the radical effects this person has on the lives of those he meets. And as we read it, so we continue to be introduced to the transforming effect he has on our lives and on the lives of others. Amen.